This is a little bit of a slab of clay, okay? So we're going to roll a flat slab of clay, just like what you did in year seven. And then you're going to cut your little pieces from that. So you'll need the same sort of equipment that you had last time. You'll need one of these canvas mats. You'll need one of these um, rods for uh, measuring the thickness of your clay. But make sure you have the one that's got the rounded top. It's not quite as fat as the other ones because your objects are quite small. You won't need very thick slabs of clay. Okay, that goes at the side of your work. You need a roller. Okay, you need your pattern when you start. So you will have needed to take your clay patterns apart. Now, if you've got a really long strip that fits around the edges of your work, you may want to just break that a little bit to make it into two parts. So I've broken off the base, or snipped off the base, separate from all of the other parts of the sides, okay? Because that will be too long. It's quite hard to roll great big long pieces out. You may not have enough clay to roll longer pieces than about the size of your um, thickness in rods. You'll also need to have a toothbrush and some water. You'll need to have a knife, which you can smooth your clay with, or your fingers, and also one of these to smooth out with at the end. Or you can use your fingers as well. So the first thing I want to just talk about is how you roll out this slab of clay. So when you get your slab of clay, don't push hard into it, don't whack it, don't do anything else with it except just roll it as you would a piece of pastry in tech. Okay, so if you're in food tech and you're rolling out a piece of puff pastry or something, you'd roll it out like this. So at first, just flatten it a little bit. Okay, and think about the shapes that you have to cut and think about the way and the shape that you have to roll your clay into. No use making a great big long piece if you've got wider pieces that you need to cut. After you've flattened it a little bit, you'll need to put the thicknessing rod at the side because your rolling pin needs to go over that thicknessing rod to make sure that we don't do this. I'll show you what happens if you don't have that there. You do this. Oops. Oh, miss, it's all sticking and it's all stuck to the roller and what am I going to do? And it goes thin. So you end up with thin bits of clay and thick bits of clay and you can't use them because they're uneven thicknesses. Clay absolutely relies on you being very careful to make sure that the thicknesses are all the same. Okay? So we use this rod to make sure that the thickness is the same. I'll just cut that bit off that we've made a mistake with and just show you. Okay, so what we do is we're rolling across this clay and onto the rod as well. So, so far I haven't reached the rod yet. When I need to roll the clay this way, I'm going to turn this around, doing the same thing. Now I'm right-handed, so probably for you it'll be the same. You'll probably put it on the left if you're right-handed. So we're rolling like that all the way through. Shouldn't take too long to roll this out. Don't fiddle around too much. As long as that thicknessing rod is on the side, you can't really make a mistake. If you roll without the thicknessing rod, you see what happens. So that's as much as I can get out of this piece of clay and keep it at that same thickness. I've gone through every side. If you have a slightly bigger bit of clay, you might just need to check the middle. You can actually sort of check it with your fingers. You can feel if it's uneven. That's fine. So that's what you do. So I've got one that I prepared earlier. And it's here. So just checking that it's, it is the right thickness. It's a little bit thicker in the middle. So I'm just going to give that a little bit more of a, a squish out through the middle there. So sometimes when you do get a bigger piece of clay and your roller doesn't cover the whole clay, it can get a little bit thicker in the middle. So as you're moving around, make sure that you're moving that thicknessing rod around so that at no time is your clay unmeasured.
place your ruler along the edge, just as though you're ruling a margin. You cut around the edges like that. So your pattern sticks nicely into place because it's made of paper. Okay, so we'll just cut all of these out. You will need to take the pieces of pattern off your clay fairly quickly because the pattern pieces will start to swell with the moisture of your clay. Plus, if you make any kind of mistake, you can reuse them again. So those pattern pieces will have your name on them, hopefully. Make sure you do have your name on them. And they will go back into the pocket that you made in the back of your visual arts process diary. Did you guys make a pocket? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Wonderful. Okay, I'm keeping the knife straight up and down to cut the curves because it makes it much easier to cut the curve pieces straight up and down. Okay, so place all of these on my canvas. So, this is how you now construct the piece. Alright, so we've cut the shapes. the architect and project management because this whole unit is based on architecture so we're looking at these shapes and we need to work out how on earth are we going to get them together and how are we going to build them together so we've got a, a side and a side which is what you drew first of all so we're actually going to build them on the side make sure that it's loose from the canvas before you start I'm going to put this piece on first and before you do anything just check that it is the right size and that there's no pieces that you need to adjust or cut off. So just run it around like this, but don't attach it. So first of all, do this. Okay, I can see that I'm going to have to cut off one little piece on this edge here. I'm just going to mark that tentatively. It's a bit dodgy on that edge there, so I might just cut that little edge off there. And I won't cut the other edge off until I've re-measured it again. Okay, so measured, that looks fine. All right. Don't overhandle your pieces. Now you hardly need any water and what you're doing here is you're going to create a lock and key for your clay work to actually stick, one part to stick to the other. So if you're an architect you'd be thinking, what materials do I need to make this fit together? So you're roughening it and you're adding a little bit of water so that you, you blend up a sort of a mud like a little muddy sort of patch, but it has a texture on it, okay? And that's what actually helps the clay to stick to itself. So, you start with your slab, holding it above, work your way around, and shape it accordingly. Now, you can still slide that at this stage, so you can still work with it, you can still shift it, and if a piece is not quite in the right place, just use whatever tool you need, including your fingers, to push it into the right position. Okay, I'll just turn that around slowly so that people on this side can see it as well. So that's how it is at the moment. Now, you can see how a long piece of clay might be difficult to build with, so you might like to cut, it, to cut your pattern into smaller pieces. Okay? I also have a piece to put at the end here, so I need to measure that carefully because it's going to be too big. Why has it turned out bigger than the pattern pieces? Anyone got any idea? What's changed? What's the variable that's changed here that's made this different from the size of the pattern pieces? What's the difference between cardboard and this slab of clay? Thickness. Yes, the clay is much thicker. So we have to allow for the thickness of the clay. So it's not going to be exact, not an exact pattern. You're going to have to make that one a little bit shorter. We're also building onto the top of the pattern piece. Did you notice I put the clay on the top of it, not around the sides of it? So it's on the top, so the, the, the faces of your piece should be nice and flat and without joins. I'm just doing that. If you have an angled piece at the side, like the one I've got here, you also might need to angle an edge. Now, this is going to be hard for you to see, but what I'm doing, I'm going to hold my knife at 45 degrees, like that, as I run it along the edge of the table. I put my slab like this, and I'm just going to, just very gently, shave off a little bit on the edge of that slab, so it's actually 45 degrees. Now, your work's not going to be absolutely perfect. This is clay, remember. Even though your little cardboard models looked wonderful, remember that. Remember that this is clay. 
Okay, so I'm going to work up a little bit of slurry. Now that's too wet, so I need to actually sponge that off because I don't want to mix water with my clay. Strange as that may seem, I need to make sure that there's not too much water here. And then I'm just making that texture. Okay, I've got my 45 degree angle there, so that should fit in perfectly there. I've actually added the texture in the sides there, so everywhere that clay touches another surface of clay, you have to add that lock and key. So that's what you have to remember. That's what makes your clay work work. When you're pushing the um, slabs together, make sure that you don't have any little fingerprints or holes in them in the sense of air bubbles trapped in slabs of clay will cause the seam to burst open when it's heated in the kiln. And these have to go into the kiln. So any air that's heated will of course expand and boom, that side of your clay work will, will burst out if you haven't joined it carefully. So make sure that as you're putting the slab down one on top of another, that you make sure that you've pressed out any areas that may have air in between the joints. Remember what you did about your join in your year seven work to make it join properly? Oh, yeah. Did you cross hatch? Well, yes, we did that. That we did a sort of a different one, but we've made a lock and key. What else did you do to strengthen the joins of your clay? I'm doing it now. What was that? Add more clay. Add more clay, and is this how you remember it? Like this? No? Well, what we do to seal the joins off is you roll a little coil of clay. It doesn't matter if it's neat or untidy or whatever, as long as you have a little coil of clay like that. And you take that, of course, from your leftover clay. Now, that goes on the inside of your work on the join. So, I'm just going to get you to film inside here. Can you see inside there? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so that gets pressed on the inside and smoothed out on the inside. So. Just this one here on the inside. Some people are going to get my nose and the side of my head in their film. So you first lay it along the join and then you smooth it along the join with your finger, making sure that it kind of locks the top to the bottom. And it should look quite neat inside. And the edge between the two slabs should look rounded because you put that little coil of clay inside. Okay, I'm not going to continue with that anymore because it will take too long, but you have to do that on all of the inside joints. So this way, upwards, as well as around the bottom. Okay, so once you've finished that and that's all smoothed off, then you get to put the lid on. So basically we're building the shapes on their side so that they... Um, are easy to build and you don't want to stand it up at this stage because it's too soft. You will be building a base onto your work so that the whole thing will be built all together because your work should be stackable and interlockable. So it means that you can turn it in any way and you should be able to use it in any particular vantage point, like any direction. Okay, so the next thing is we have to create that lock and key through here. So again, just a damp toothbrush on the top. Make sure it doesn't have too much water in it. If you use a sponge like I just have there, you will need to make sure that you wash that up as part of your equipment as well. Okay, so we're creating this lock, and it's sort of a muddy surface, so it's roughened and textured as well as muddy. Okay, this piece then gets slid onto the top. Now, you might find that your slabs on the side have flared out a little bit. They might have sort of spread out a little bit, so you might just need to push them back into place around your top shape because you'll cut your top shape out exactly the same as the bottom shape. Okay, now pressing all around to make sure that there is no air anywhere in between. If you find that on this one here, this little slab here has gone inside a little bit, so it's indented. So before I actually lock that together, I can lift that up and just gently push that out again to make a really neat shape. But again, just make sure that you seal that off really carefully to make sure there is no air getting trapped in the seam. So what I'm doing now is I am smoothing down over the seams. So I'm going over all those seams on the edges and smoothing them towards the inside or towards the outside, doesn't matter which way you do it, but you just need to smooth them down and make them neat so that we can't see them anymore. 
Okay, and you can use a knife to do that instead of your finger. Okay, now if this isn't looking quite perfect for you, you can actually use your knife to straighten up any edges and pieces that aren't as straight as you would like. When you come to a geometrically straight edge, you will need to use the side of your knife like this to get it nice and sharp. Okay. At this stage, while your clay is a little bit soft, it is quite hard because it tends to stick to any tools or anything. After a day or two in your next lesson when you come back, you'll be able to do a lot easier. The curved shapes are much easier, so you can just smooth them off with your finger or with one of these little rubber kidneys, they're called. Probably because they're shaped like kidneys, I imagine. Okay, so you're smoothing it off with these little tools. That's nowhere near smoothed off enough, but you will need to put that aside to just get a little bit harder before you do anything else. Now, it's also enclosed that bubble of air, so we're left with a dilemma there. We're left with a problem of what to do. Now, here are some of the things that you will need to remember to do to your work. You will need to take a skewer and put a skewer just through one little section of your work if you are not cutting windows or holes into your work. If you are cutting windows and shapes into your work that you've planned before, that's fine. But if it's a shape that just has texture on it and no holes, you will have to put a hole in it with a skewer, just a little pinhole with a skewer, so that you don't enclose the air and it doesn't burst in the kiln. So you've got to make sure you remember to do that. This one I'm just going to pretend that I have a shape that I had planned to cut. Miss, can we cut the shape before? You can. You certainly can. And I think that's a really good idea. Also, at this stage, it's not a good idea to cut the shape out because the clay is still too soft. So I would wait until this piece, if it was me, I would wait until this piece was a little bit harder and then actually cut the shapes out. Okay, now, you're going to have to work with the leftover clay that you have. So I'm just going to put that aside for the moment. The leftover slabs that you have, you're going to have to wedge up to reuse for other shapes and things. So... This is how you wedge clay. First of all, you press all the pieces together. You lift it up in your hands and you're pressing with these soft bits of your hands under here. You're bringing it up and you're pressing into it with both hands, bringing it up again, pressing down onto the top, bringing it up to the tall side, pressing down, bringing it up to the tall side. You need to do this 20 times. That presses the air out of the clay so that if you want to roll another slab, it not only makes the clay a better consistency and less sticky, but it makes sure that you haven't got any air in your clay. So using those soft bits of your hand on your palm, putting it up to the tall side, pressing down into it. That's all it is. You're just pressing down into the clay, and then you turn it up into the tall side again and lean on it and press down into it. And just count 20 times, and then you're finished, and that clay should be ready to reuse and re-roll out again. If your clay has air bubbles in it, the air bubbles will appear as a little bubble. If you've got roughness on your roller, the roller will make a texture that looks like a little bubble, so check your roller first. If you think you have an air bubble in your clay, it will actually look like a little pimple or a little uh, mosquito bite, and you'll need to get uh, the clay back together again, fold it back up again, and start wedging again to get rid of any air in your clay. So if that happens, you'll need to re-wedge it again. Okay, so once you've made one piece or cut one lot of slabs, you can start to roll another slab to make your second piece. And so sometimes in some lessons, you'll be able to roll all that you need. Okay, and do all that you need in one piece. Um, I would, uh, if you've got lots and lots of shapes to cut out of your front face, don't forget, don't do them until later. So if you've got a whole side with loads and loads of shapes cut out. That will be too difficult to join on with all those shapes cut out. So leave that one until you've finished the work and it starts to get a little bit harder and then you can get a nice sharp knife and cut those shapes in and then neaten it up the way that you want it to be. Okay, so this is by no means as neat as it needs to be. So what we need to do here is we need to go over it again and again and again. 
until we have straightened it up to a nice uniform.